Today's show is sponsored by ExpressVPN, one-click protection for all your devices. Securing yourself could not be easier. Visit expressvpn.com forward slash funhouse. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Film House, the podcast that I think has actually gotten more fun to do since movies stopped existing. Um, and, uh, and I am really excited to have some guests on this week. Uh, I'll just go ahead and introduce everybody right now. Uh, I'm your host, James Willems, joined by Elise Willems. Hey, thanks for having me, James, who's also yeah. my husband. Ooh, romance. Romance. That's a, that's a <laughs> hint. Uh, Lindsay Washburn. Hey, thanks for having me, Elise, who's also my husband. Ooh, romance. Kind of platonic, but will they, won't they? Will they, won't they? And it's very funny, too. Um, And last but not least, (laughs) Zach Anner. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm going to die alone. Oh, okay. Well, you know, all side. We have shown every single side of the romantic spectrum here. Um, And that's kind of a tease for what's going to be happening on this week's episode You've seen it before. Everybody loves it. It doesn't drive people wild at all. We are doing, in honor of Valentine's Day, only a few short days away, we are going to be doing the best romantic comedy ultimate film bracket. Okay? Mm -hmm. You haven't seen these in the past. We have done these. We have done these before. We've done them with sequels. We've done them with perfect. Wait, no, we didn't do do. We didn't do sequels formally. We just did perfect film. We did horror film. We did Christmas film. And now seasonally, it adds up perfectly that we're going to do romantic comedy. Zach, what's the problem? I am I supposed to be able to read the the text? I can't read Uh, any of the words. That's okay. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. (laughs) I'll tell you what they say. Don't worry about that. That's that's purely for our our viewers that want to follow along. We'll have the bracket up for you. I also want to add that this is the biggest bracket we've ever done. Normally, we gather some selections, maybe four or five from each of the panelists, and then throw those together. Not this time. We just made a big old honky list. And it is a beast. I think we have 32, 32 films that That's are on this list. That's too many films. It's I would say films. Of, of all of the film houses I've been a part of, mm-hmm. I have seen the least films of, of this genre. Perfect. Uh, so it's going to be a real nightmare of a show. But Perfect. you were supposed to be like an expert in romantic comedy. I'm an expert in a few in a few romantic <laughs> comedies. Specialist, he's a specialist. <laughs> well, Lindsay's yeah, here. Like I've, I've seen like five, and I know those really well. He, so he's, he's like a history professor, but a history professor who only focuses on like specific years of Greek history. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, uh, yeah, we ha- that's why we brought in Lindsay as well. Lindsay herself yeah, I, claims to be an expert. I mean. Uh, yeah, I claim to be, I'm an expert. Uh, I haven't seen maybe like eight of these, so Mm -hmm, I feel pretty mm -hmm. good about the rest of them though. Well, the good, the good thing about all this is there are so many films that if we want to get this done in a reasonable time frame, we're going to have to just kind of move past some of these. So, um, so I think we should just jump right in. We're going to be jumping right in to our top bracket because we have to complete two full brackets. Okay. We're going to jump in on our top bracket, West Coast. The the only two movies that didn't... Actually, should I just list every single thing? Should I just do the list? Yeah, I'm I mean, going to do the fastest. list. I'm going to do the whatever list because that'll be the best. Done. So here's what we got. <laughs> <laughs> here's what we got. Forgetting Sarah Marshall, Love Actually, Moonstruck, Bridget Jones's Diary, Never Been Kissed, Brown Sugar, Always Be My Maybe, Love and Basketball, Tootsie, uh, while you were sleeping, to all the boys I've loved before, coming to America, something's got to give. Notting Hill, Mamma Mia, you've got mail. Sleepless in Seattle, Groundhog Day, four weddings and a funeral, the Philadelphia story, crazy stupid love, overboard, the apartment, clueless, how to lose a guy in ten days, the wedding singer, the big sick, my big fat Greek wedding, uh, love, Juno, when Harry met Sally, pretty woman, and my best friend's wedding. That are all of the films that have made this list. And we're going to jump right in with the two films that are fi- just fighting to get onto this list. 
Love Actually and Moonstruck. That is going to be our first showdown here. James, I have my decision. All right. Elise has already oh, decided. Fuck. Why are all why are these movies all pitted? Because the Forgetting Sarah Marshall is in the next one. Fuck. Well, I'm sorry. That's just how it works. We know uh, the system. Everyone always likes to get on our case for being so haphazard about this. Even though every single time I literally tell you that we use a randomizer. Yes, to I know decide that. What However, makes it the bracket. I know that I'm going to vote for Moonstruck for this one. However, that means it's up against Forgetting Sarah Marshall. So two of my favorite movies are going to be going head to head. Well, I'm sorry to say only one movie can win. So that's I've gonna, never seen that's Moonstruck. Happen, so okay. sorry, Elise. Uh-huh. I think it has to go. Oh, wow. OK. Oh, my Great. God. Lindsay, Cher won an Oscar for it. Oh, Cher. Cher's incredible in it. Well, we're She's incredible. Have to, we have to move. We have to blast through this one. So I'll okay. just say this real quick. Love Actually is a terrible movie, and it doesn't okay. depict any form of All romance. Right. And I've said that, and I'll say it a hundred times. There's Cher win- and accepting her Oscar for Moonstruck. I think Moonstruck is weird. But I do think that it, it is a, a movie. It's got some laughs. It's got some heft to it. Some strong Did you just performances. Say, I do think that it is a movie. I do that think is that the, it is a movie that it, has some oh, heft. Okay. okay. Mo- it is a movie that it contains these attributes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Nicholas Zach, Cage. You, Nicholas Cage. He didn't have a hand. Whoa. What do you think, Zach? I lost my hand. <laughs> I lost my bride. Johnny has his hand. Johnny has his bride. What do you want me to do? Put it away and forget it? <laughs> See? This wow. is why Moonstruck wins. Don't get married, Loretta. It don't work out for you. Okay. All right. So, uh, we again, <laughs> in the effort of keeping keeping things moving along, okay. Um, we're going to have to vote on this one right now. Take Moonstruck. Take it. Take it to the next. T- take it to the next. <laughs> Lindsay. All right. Lindsey can see. Because now I got to see this movie. Moonstruck yes, Lindsay, is do. the winner beating Love Actually, a movie yes. that doesn't know what Love Actually is. Okay. Um, it wins because I got to see it tonight because I'm going to watch it later. So that's why okay. it wins. It's so good, Lindsay. <laughs> We're going to come back it's around. Better. Considering we just did Moonstruck, we'll keep going down this this list here. And then okay. our last one will be Forgetting Sarah Marshall versus Moonstruck again. Putting there it is. Moonstruck moves on to the next round. You're officially in the bracket. Congratulations, Moonstruck. Goodbye, Love Actually. All also, right. yeah, I didn't really like Love Actually that much, but. I have seen it, so. Yeah, you have seen it. Okay, moving on to Bridget Jones's Diary and Never Been Kissed. Bridget Jones's Diary, a a light recreation of Pride and Prejudice. Okay, kind of a modernized take on all that. Uh, standout performance from Reese Witherspoon. Um, Hugh Grant is a really inappropriate boss. Um Movie's a lot of fun. Of course, on the other side, we have Never Been Kissed. Drew Barrymore. What do you mean Renee Zellweger? School. Renee yeah. Zellweger, Reese whatever. Reese Witherspoon. Whatever. Yeah, she probably could like, have been in it. Sweet Home Alabama? <laughs> it's basically the same name. Um, I don't think any Reese Witherspoon films made yeah. this list. How did she not make the list at all? Just because she has more doesn't mean they're good. Mm. Sorry. But. Just like True. heaven. But yeah, so Drew Barrymore never been kissed. She's a, she's she's a, a character who shockingly has never been kissed. <laughs> I would say that at the same time that Bridget Jones' Diary was my mom's fa- favorite film, uh, mm-hmm. at the same time, Never Been Kissed was my favorite film, oh, and I'm a Drew okay. stan, so I gotta okay. take. I, I'm I gotta go with Never Been Kissed. All right. I just want to okay. bring this to everyone's attention. Please do. When Renee Zellweger was cast as this icon, you know, because it's adapted from a book. This this English icon, people were so skeptical of her, so cynical. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, she turned out an amazing performance. And while I think that a lot of the, you know, in the movie, you're like looking at Hugh Grant being like, this is such a scumbag. Like, how is how does this hold up? We're supposed to enjoy watching this. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it, it, Helen Fielding herself, the author, she said, you know, that's just kind of kind of how it was, too. But also last year in 2020, uh, I think the BBC it was released a documentary called Being Bridget Jones and people in the UK turned out in droves to watch it. Like they are still obsessed with Bridget Jones all these years later. Um, take that for what it's worth. A I am cultural, torn. So you're saying it is a cultural monolith. In some it's ways. a cultural monolith. And I'm torn. I'm I still whenever I'm doing something alone that's mm-hmm. specifically lonely, I always shout lonely rider bucket four. 
because in in Never Been Kissed when she gets on the yeah. Ferris wheel, the guy, <laughs> okay, the guy says the whole thing. David Arquette coming in, being her cool. Bro. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. It's a great. These it are both really great leans movies. more into the comedy of romance. It's fun. I it's mean, a, it's, it's romance, more fun than Bridget it's Jones. Also, it's like it's of that American Pie era of like we're really having fun in high school. Zach, what are you thinking? Uh, I'm really torn uh, because uh, Drew Barrymore was my celebrity crush when I was a kid. Kind of mm. still is. Okay. Love mm-hmm. Drew Barrymore. She's a big fan but of the show. I see what Elise is saying that I feel like uh, like Drew Barrymore is represented elsewhere on this list. And I feel like she'll get her due. But Bridget Jones' diary, you know, you got your Colin Firth and your Hugh Grant. Mm-hmm. And uh, those two dream boats. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I just feel it's real tough. I don't know what I'm going to vote. It's going to come down to the last second. This is a perfect is a perfect example of something we always wrestle with on these bracket, these tournament brackets, which is best romantic comedy doesn't necessarily mean best film that is a romantic comedy if that makes any sense I and mean, it does only in my own I, twisted I brain i understand what you're saying because we had it before we saw it where we you know in the horror bracket pan's labyrinth made it so much further than <laughs> i think it should have because it's a good film but is it a horror film like i don't know that i would agree so we um, should vote for we sure prob- we probably have to vote on this one this is a really really tough one and it's i'm tough. glad we're getting it out of the way Fuck. soon okay um okay i think i'm ready all right I'm um, ready to vote. so the way we do this is we're gonna do one hand uh raise one hand for uh bridget jones diary raise two hands for never been kissed we're gonna do it on three okay Hands ready yeah Wait, 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 wait. One for Bridget Jones, two for Never okay. Been Kissed. All right, on three. One, two, three. Oh my God. It's we so got to split. On the, it's so on the tough. Flip and second one, we got to split. You know what that means. That means we got to go to the coin flip. This was a heartbreaking vote. I hate the Cody, coin. I'm can not you show us the coin grossy flip? Anymore. I'm 17. What is this? I'm 17. Tails, that goes to Never Been Tails. Kissed. Never Been Kissed is the winner of that round. Wow. So I'm taking it on. I, I'm okay. fine with it, too. This, this is a I love Bridget yeah. Jones, but Never Been Kissed is a really fun movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Cody, just just for curiosity's sake, who would you have gone for on that one? Would you have gone just... just yeah, no, we don't have have uh, Shane, the previous tiebreaker. Okay, he would have gone oh. Bridget Jones. <laughs> Get out of here, Cody. <laughs> 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 okay, all right. Well, we've never been kissed right. as the winner of that round. Let's keep moving to Brown Sugar versus Always Be My Maybe. I have not Ooh. seen Brown Sugar. I'll I haven't seen Brown Sugar brown, either. Brown I Sugar is Sana Lathan, Tay Diggs. I think Queen Latifah. It's been it's been mm-hmm. fifteen years since I've seen it. Okay. Um, it's very fun. It's got mm-hmm. like it's it's a oh it's got most deaf in it. It's a it's a love letter to hip hop too. Okay. Um, which is really, really fun because like the the music is so good in it. And the main character, if I remember, played by Sana Lathan, I think she's a hip hop writer, mm-hmm. I want to say. And then she, and she's, she's a critic. And then ultimately, like, I don't want to spoil it, but, you they know, finds herself, then. too. Gotcha. And, and uh, I really liked it a lot. OK. So I haven't um, seen that, but I have seen what's the other one to all the boys I've loved before. Always That's be my, Netflix. always be my. Baby. Oh, always, sorry, always be yeah, my. Yeah, they baby. get confused because they have the word always in them. Always yeah. in it, yeah. Okay, always be my maybe. Hang on. That's a Ali Wong That's, and Randall yeah, Park. Yeah, Wong. They're mm-hmm. like old friends, oh, right? Yeah, Who then like? She's like, yeah. <sighs> I've seen it. I've seen it. It, it wasn't memorable because I got, literally just mixed it up with the other. Got films. got a lot of buzz because it included a wild Keanu Reeves just being yeah. wacky. That's right. Zach loved it. Zach, big fan. I mean, I mean, you're yeah. muted, Zach. Oh, am I? I don't. You're good. Yeah, you're back. You're good. I think been <laughs> you're good. I can hear you. Oh well, I haven't seen. Uh, I haven't seen Brown Sugar. I fell asleep during Always Be My Maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, so okay, well, I mean, I didn't fall asleep during Brown Sugar. That's fair. That's true. Uh, but I I did enjoy Always Be My Maybe. Okay. The the mm-hmm. part that it, I was awake it was, for, and then yeah, 
it was enjoyable. She was a very rich chef. I always yeah, have a thing sometimes right, about right. romantic comedies where like the main character is like massively wealthy. And I'm like, what's it really? I mean, you got bigger fish to fry, right? Can't you just yeah. fill yeah, up well, that then void it's like with money? It's like, oh, money chef. doesn't buy my, the money she doesn't buy, buy love. It. But yeah, you know, I know. Maybe it does. But you can buy other things and you can have sex with mm-hmm. those things. All right. I think I'm ready to vote. I'm ready okay. to vote, and I have one more stipulation, and I'm going to vote for brown sugar because Tay Diggs follows me on Twitter, and I just felt like you should all know that. He he follows a lot of people, Lindsay. How many people Listen, does he follow? Don't take this I have also from been me. followed by Tay Diggs on Twitter. <laughs> don't Did you get unfollowed by Tay Diggs? No, he follows Zach, like 700,000 people, you? so... I, I have seen, and if it, if it helps anyone's vote, I have seen brown sugar more than once. Okay. I already told you I'm voting for it because I'm very special okay. and Tay Diggs oh, follows no. me on Twitter. Tay. All right, I'm ready to vote. One for brown sugar, Diggs. two for always be my maybe. Ooh, doesn't okay, follow ready. me. I was going to vote for brown sugar, but he does not follow me, which is like, that's hers. I okay. mean, it really just shows what a garbage person you are. Kind of. <laughs> to not make Tay it into Diggs. the 700K. <laughs> just yeah. all right. follows like nothing. Okay, uh, all right. <laughs> So one hand, one hand for uh, brown sugar, two for always be my maybe on three, one, two, three. Brown sugar. Okay. I was thinking that there would be a coin flip. I just want to make this as long as possible. No, we can't do that, Zach. You know we can't. We're already moving way faster than we've ever moved on this before. Okay, so brown All sugar right. moves on to the next round. Very good. Congratulations, brown sugar. It's All a right. fun movie. It's a fun movie. Um, next up, we have Love and Basketball and Tootsie. So, you know, at least I know you're a big fan of Love and Basketball. I, I like Silent Not Thon a lot, so I have also comedy, seen... Though. I've seen Love and... That's the thing, Zach. Okay, I was going to raise that point, Zach, because I've seen Love and Basketball multiple times. Love Silent Thon, Omar Epps is in it. It's got a fun, you know, underdog story. It's... Uh, Sana Lathan, finding especially as a woman in sports, it's got mm-hmm. a great story. Mm-hmm. Um, her trying to like find her self worth in that way. But Zach just raised a question: Is it a comedy? It's not a funny movie. Okay, all right. Like, it's somehow like Zach, you've, this you've list, seen it, I right? Yeah, I I don't I don't remember a lot of chuckles. On IMDb, it says drama, romance, sport. Yeah, yep. yeah. Not a lot of comedy in it. Okay. It's what? it's. Charming. Who nominated, who nominated this thing? I did, because I like it. We could have put anything else in this pot. <laughs> um, okay, well, considering that, we're comparing it with Tootsie, um, which is Dustin Hoffman uh, dressing up as a woman to get a job. Tootsie <laughs> made Dustin Hoffman cry. Made Dustin Hoffman cry. Yeah, before Dustin Hoffman was disgraced. Yes. Uh he he got a lot of points for tearing up about the role of Tootsie. Yeah, the woman's experience. Yeah. The woman's experience. And because men didn't look at him when he was dressed as her, and then he felt bad for us ugly chicks. That was basically <laughs> what he said. Okay, but what about and the movie? I was movie? like, thanks, Dustin. So the movie, the movie's a classic, <laughs> of course. It's considered a classic. Um, yeah. You know, I haven't seen it in a while, but Same. obviously... I- that's I haven't seen it since I was a child. Um, mm-hmm. And so I remember very little about it, but I have been watching a lot of 30 Rock and they reference Tootsie a lot. OK, so that's basically like having seen it. So uh, and uh, they get some good jokes out of Tootsie. Mm-hmm. So I got to I think I got to vote for it. I think I think I'm going to have to vote for it as well, if only for the fact that it's going up against a romantic drama, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> which should should give it a pass. Um, but again, this goes back to the thing is like if we're just judging by caliber of movie, you know, Love and Bla- Basketball is probably a pretty fantastic, wonderfully made movie. So but isn't Tootsie also and it's a not- classic? It is a classic. Yes. That's cited in like multiple like screenplay books of like, oh, this is a, a, a perfect example yes, all, of a movie. All of my old film professors would cite Tootsie. But again, if I was a professor now, my students, I would be citing Sucker Punch. So really, what what doesn't matter? <laughs> mm. I, um, I Lindsay, Tootsie. I've never seen either of them. So I'm at well, my then, I'm my hand. I got to keep my hands out of this. Our <laughs> expert has seen 
very few of these. Films. She said she says she we're, only we're hadn't working seen our eight. Way. She had only had only hadn't seen eight. Okay, so let's let's move it, Lindsay. Even though you haven't seen either of these films, you're still obligated to vote. That's the okay, nature of this for Tootsie, scientific it's experiment. In the category of the bracket, is it? Are everyone going Tootsie, Elise? Tootsie, yeah. yes, Tootsie, 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 Tootsie wins. Very nice. We don't even have to vote because <laughs> it's going up against something that did not should not have qualified. <laughs> I feel like there was something else that I kicked <laughs> off the list because I was like, this doesn't this doesn't seem like it fits. Oh, <laughs> next Miss Con- it's Miss next Conge- we're doing forgetting Sarah Marshall versus 1917. Let's see which one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> better romance. It's comedy. got some romance. It's got some laughs. I think I took Miss Congeniality off the list because I really? did not feel as though I felt like it was because I think sometimes movies that center on women get pigeonholed as romantic comedies just because they include romance, but you wouldn't say that Die Hard is a romantic comedy because Die Hard also includes romance because it's from the male perspective. Mm-hmm. So that's, I think I removed it from the list. I think it's an like an action comedy that has romance in it. Anyway, okay, uh, yeah. let's move on to the East Coast of this bracket. We're going to do, okay, this is actually going to be a tough one for me. Okay. While, while you were sleeping, Sandra Bullock... Okay. Uh, invades the trust of a man she stalks um, <laughs> and uh, endears herself to the family against to all the boys I've loved before. So, to all the boys, was that was a Netflix film, right? That's yeah, the Netflix Lynn, one. Yeah. Um, that is Laura Jean. She mm-hmm. writes these letters mm-hmm. to the boys that she's loved before. Oops. Her little sister accidentally sends those letters. Okay, she's navigating high school. She's navigating her sister, mm-hmm. you know, being in a relationship with, to that point, her best friend, Josh. The new movie comes out this week. It's, uh, you don't have to Do I think it should win over while you were sleeping? Probably not. Okay. All right. Interesting take. Interesting take. I think it's a great, I think it's a great movie. I think if there's one thing Netflix has kind of gotten is not necessarily all, cause you have stuff like Christmas Prince, which I don't, I, you know, I haven't really seen, but it seemed like they're more like lifetime, but like it is, a, it is a fun movie with very charismatic leads. I remember when we watched this one, I was like, Oh, let's just throw this on. And then I was like, this was a really good movie. But while you were sleeping is a disturbing classic. <laughs> <laughs> Zach likes it. I I remember seeing that with my my grandpa uh with papa at the cheapy theater cuz he had seen it already at the expensive theater and thought it was darling. So we went to see it a second time. Oh, very nice. Uh, so, I mean, any and and then you know, Sandra Bullock uh very charming bill mm-hmm. pullman uh is uh, about a, uh, th- th- that's about as charming as he gets yeah. it's like mm-hmm. it going going outside and seeing like a nice tree like oh that's bill pullman mm-hmm. like um, <laughs> yeah so yeah this is great okay all right do you like it Lindsay? while while you're sleeping or yeah yeah i mean i remember when i watched it and i was like cool check that off my classic rom-com movies list but it's not, you know, top of the classic rom-com list for me. So honestly, like when I watched, uh, oh, um, I almost said always be my baby. <laughs> you just keep swapping to them. all the boys I've loved before. It was like I had that same experience. Like, well, I'm just going to put something random and crappy on Netflix just to start watching it. And then I'm like, oh, this is like really mm-hmm. cute. Wow. It is. And I'm 30. Okay. <laughs> these are high schoolers mm-hmm. so i feel like i'm gonna go with the fresh and young rom-com yeah um okay while, all right. always be can I, while you were writing me letters can <laughs> i just tell you guys there there's a stellar ensemble cast in while you were sleeping mm-hmm. bill mm-hmm. pullman bill pullman and then what's the stellar cast uh the mom from mary poppins is okay. is the old gammy mm-hmm. uh i have to look up their names peter uh peter gallagher peter gallagher peter gallagher and then also peter um peter boyle oh two peters uh glillis uh, johns is the kind of 
grandmother or not grandmother or like family friend or thing um and <laughs> then uh, not, you're not it's not like you're line, lining out the hollywood a-listers to see jack what. warden is in it too like it's got you know it's uh and and i just want to say there's a scene in that movie that doesn't need to be in that movie mm-hmm. so it's a pure transition where there's a, a paper boy who's riding a bike and it's snowy you know it's all snowy outside and, the, and you see the paper boy riding the bike down the street for like a few feet and then they're throwing throwing newspapers onto driveways, throwing newspapers onto driveways, and then and then they go to throw the third newspaper, and as they throw it, just wipe out, just completely wipe out, mm-hmm. and they didn't need that. It it does nothing. It does nothing besides being a funny mm-hmm. little transition where this paper boy wipes okay. out on their bike, and, and it. Then that's, that's what all you're, I'll say. Uh, okay, that's all you'll say. All right, I think we have to vote. I think we have okay. to vote on this. I'm ready one. to vote. All Let's right. Do it. So one hand for while you were sleeping, two for to all the boys I've loved before. Okay. okay. On three. One, two, three. I knew it. I knew it was gonna oh, happen. Wow. It's a tie. Yeah, he just wants a tie. He's it's just trying to break it. No, I just okay. I mean I think I think maybe I I identify with what Lindsay said, which is I was like, let's just put on this whatever movie. And then by the end of it, I was like, I actually really like that whole thing. Yeah. Whereas by oh, the no. time I saw while you were sleeping, it already had a reputation for kind of being a romantic classic. And then I actually watched it and I was like, it's okay. So Zach is trying to break it. Well. Wow. No, Zach, I think Zach, he has those fond memories with his I with have his grandfather. my fond with memories Pop-Pop. with my grandpa, and I That's didn't want to disrespect those. Yeah. I, I appreciate Honorable. that. Okay. Well, it's time for someone else to disrespect it. This coin. And I'm talking, of course, about the coin, everyone's favorite panelist from this show. Coin, if you don't mind, we're going to do, it'll be heads while you were sleeping, tails to all the boys I've loved before. Flip away, little coin. Oh, heads no. while you were sleeping you can't argue yeah. with it though Lindsay. like you can't it's just it's just has it. to forget to the it. youth it's a coin yeah right <laughs> get the youth okay let's we still got a long way to go we're almost we're almost halfway through this podcast that's okay all right all right moving on this one i actually think is a interest very interesting matchup coming to america okay versus something's <laughs> gotta give uh <laughs> What's, what's so Again, funny? What's making you I laugh? would say that coming to It is to just a America, funny mashup. Yeah. A, would we call coming to America a romantic comedy first? I mean... Probably not. It's a... I mean, I would say it is It is for sure a comedy. It's comedy. But the it's whole comedy, premise... At least. But the whole premise is about him finding love, right? Like, that's the thrust of it is the only re- the inciting incident is his perception of love so i think there's a better argument to be made for this than some of the other ones it's not like he just happens across love it's a fish out of water story but it's it's not like he just happens across love while he's in that new body of water but this is a this is a, if that makes sense it it makes me laugh but i feel like a, a big part of uh, romantic comedy is that it has to make me laugh and also make me feel lonely. <laughs> okay, good, good. Uh, and coming to America does not make me feel lonely in mm-hmm. the right way. Okay. I, I understand what that. you're saying, yeah. Yeah. It's definitely more comedy than it is romance. And I would even I would even add that the romance in coming to America, a little strange, you know, like his whole thing is that he doesn't want to be uh, he doesn't want to be assigned a bride. He wants to find true love. So he goes to Queens to find his queen. And then basically the first like kind of normal person he sees, he's like, that's the one. <laughs> and then spends the rest of the movie pursuing her, which in some ways is not really that much different than having just been assigned a bride in the first place. Um, so I would definitely say that's a strike against coming to America despite the fact that it's very, very funny. Um, something's yes. got to give. Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead, Lindsay. No, I was going to say, like, if this is a, a bracket of, like, what is a better, funnier movie, like a better movie, a better classic, mm-hmm. it would be Coming to America. Mm-hmm. But I, I feel like if, you know, we're going to start talking about something's got to give, mm-hmm. that is, like, true rom-com. 
Mm-hmm. Precarious situation, you know, like, oh, there's mm-hmm. something unique about them. Oh, the old guy who's a lady, a young lady yeah. killer mm-hmm. falls in love. A with- dreamy leading man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Nicholson at mm-hmm. 17. It's got Jack Nicholson. It's got Diane Keaton, Keanu mm-hmm. Reeves, Francis McDormand, Amanda Peet, John Favreau, stellar cast. This, and this is- one, Go ahead. Diane Keaton bears all, you know. Yep. It's I, I know what I I know what I'm voting for. I mean, Coming to America is a wonderful comedy. Very excited for the sequel, but uh, you know something's got to give. Just hits all those points of the genre. You know, it's, it's got that nice sort of like, uh, oh, I might die alone, but at least these people won't, which is very important. Very important for me. <laughs> um, so you know, gotta go. Something yeah. gotta give. I, I'm surprised. As good as it's as good as it gets, also didn't make this list as well. This right? is weird. Yeah, that's very strange. I mean, I would say I would say compared to the two, something's gotta give is maybe more of a pure romantic comedy. Yeah. Whereas as good as mm-hmm. it gets is like a little cynical. Like, it's it's pretty cynical. He's an asshole. There's a big age difference there, and the whole premise is that Greg Kinnear gets like beat up in the beginning yeah and like, that's the only hate reason crime. Yeah, he's yeah. victim of a hate crime in the beginning that and movie's like got an reason. f-bomb in it so it definitely has mm. it definitely has uh less funny elements to it so like but it did pave the way for something's got uh, what's the one movie. with uh meryl streep and alec baldwin because that also oh, didn't make it on here we didn't it's, put it's complicated on didn't here? put it's complicated on here you all had the list for at least five days before this <laughs> this taping. Cool. You could have thought of it's so complicated. Many, so many or, spots for the senior citizen love stories. Yeah. What's, what's the one? Well, yeah, we didn't even put Exotic Marigold Hotel. but Yeah, or the yeah, second best Exotic Marigold Hotel. We, did, we had a severe lack of elderly romance in this. Anyway, all right. So are we ready to vote on this one? Ready. Yes, yeah. and I will just add one more thing to say that I am going to be voting for, um, um, <laughs> something's got to give. What's wrong with my brain in the movie name? Something's <laughs> got to give because of Diane Keaton, and she is the reason that I drank ice in my red wine, and I want to be her when I'm older. Oh, okay. she's great. She's so. good. Wonderful. Now I'm trying she's to think of that though. Alec Baldwin movie where How do I oh, Prelude movie? to a Kiss. Nah, that movie sucks. Anyway, all right. All right. One hand for coming to America, two for something's gotta give. You guys okay. ready? On three. One, two, three. There it is. Well, something you had Nancy to give. Myers. Nancy Myers. Something had to give, and that was Coming to America. Again, I think Coming to America is a great movie, a great comedy, but I think that maybe it it doesn't have the attributes of a great romantic comedy. Yep. Doesn't make it any less of a film. No, don't cry yourself home. All right, here we go. This one, oh boy, B, I can't wait to see the discussion. I don't think I have All a right. single dog in the fight. But Notting Hill, this is like Hugh Grant, right? Isn't this peak Hugh Grant stuttering? This movie was yeah, huge yeah. when it came out. Massive against Mama Mia. Probably one of the more unconventional ones that we have on here. It's obviously, it's a musical. Right. Um, it's a musical whodunit. <laughs> Which is what I like about it. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, Mamma Mia, definitely a different take on the romantic comedy, but I think it belongs on this list for sure. But again, it's going up against heavyweight like Notting Hill. Game, a, a, a movie so much of a romantic comedy that when it came out, I said, I have no interest in this whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'm going to go with Notting Hill for this one. I saw Mamma Mia in theaters and that was like a really delightful experience. And it came out on in movie form. And I don't know what it was. I just was like, I don't want to see that. OK. All right. But I do okay. love Notting Hill. All right. Been many okay. years. Yep. Uh, at least rebuttal. I'd like to hear what Zach has to okay, say great. before I weigh in, because I have a huge the, bias in this fight. Here's the the thing about uh, about Notting Hill, a uh, very quintessential uh, romantic comedy. Terrible uh, music choices. Uh, hmm. Like if you if you watch any of those, uh, I, I don't know who's seen um, Notting Hill recently, but it's just it really takes you out of the film. But that iconic scene at the end, you know, I'm just a, a girl standing, standing in front of a boy. 
uh, asking him to love her. You know, how can we how can we deny that? That's, oh, that's scene, give me a right? break with this saccharine sweet bullshit, Zach. <laughs> oh, well, all right. Well, go ahead. Go I ahead. Respected, I respected everything Lindsay had to say about the movie. But I tried, I tried no, line. I'm with Zach. I'm with Zach. I totally... Oh, but then fuck both of you because <laughs> Mama Mia is a delightful experience, and you're not just getting you're getting old people romance. You're getting young people romance. You're getting the 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 love that occurs between a mother and daughter. The love that occurs between the daughter and the three fathers she doesn't know. You're hanging out on a beautiful island in Greece and of course you're listening to one of the greatest Scandinavian bands of all time for the entire movie, which is ABBA. Uh, it was so, so amazing. We got a great sequel uh, which I saw alone in the theater and also had to tell an old woman to get her ass out of my seat. So, so lots thank of you very much. Like Zach and I think we're voting for Mamma Mia. <laughs> Okay. Well, that was very passionate. It was very passionate. I, I will say it about Notting Hill. I don't really have fun watching that movie. No, it's not fun. It's not <laughs> fun. It's very slow. It's, yes. But it is It is two titans of the genre and together. And also Julia Roberts playing a version of Julia Roberts mm -hmm. and sort of getting to the bottom of what what fame is like it's not you know, a very fun not, version of julia roberts I don't, though. I don't need her introspection i i here's the thing. i'm ready to vote i think yeah, i was vote. i think i was ready to vote but then yeah we did kind of really get into the nitty-gritty of what notting hill is about and i think now i'm ready to vote again before i vote i just do want to point out that on the wikipedia it says that notting hill won a british comedy award and a brit award for the soundtrack zach comedy so There's someone out there soundtrack. loved it terrible. <laughs> okay <laughs> all right we're gonna vote it's going to be one hand for Notting Hill, two hands for Mamma Mia. You guys ready okay. on three? Yeah, I'm ready. One, two, three. Wow. Whoa. Wow. I, I'm I surprised. That's how I haven't even coin flip. seen Mamma Mia. And I just thought I, I, had, I couldn't defend Notting Hill as well as Elise <laughs> defended <laughs> Mama well, Mia. I didn't really That's defend fair. it as much as I lambasted you and Lindsay <laughs> and, got, I, and got a little personal. It's fine. <laughs> I don't care. I watched Notting Hill alone while eating 40 chicken nuggets. I remember that. <laughs> so, yeah. I've okay. been there. You shoveling uh, those nuggets into your mouth going, this movie's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have to, we, we are almost done with this oh. bracket. We're going to finish the, at least, how does that feel? That must feel real good. That's a big it's a win. It's a good win. That's a big it's a win. good win. <laughs> All right. We're going to, we're going to, uh, we're going to finish this bracket and then get through as much as we can. Cause there's a whole nother page of bracket, but first oh we want to make sure you hear a word from the sponsor of this week's episode. With the year we've all been having, it's time to start really saving some money, even in the little ways. Cause it all adds up. So if you're paying insane amounts of money for your wireless bill every month, don't do it. You don't have to, you can switch to mint mobile. The easiest way to save this year as the first company to sell Premium wireless services online only. Mint Mobile lets you maximize your savings with plans starting at just $15 a month. Don't believe me? Ask our friend of the show, John Smith. He switched to Mint Mobile and he was saving like $70 a month. It was crazy. If you're looking to save a little extra bucks this year, as I said, $15 online only. Eliminate the traditional costs of retail. Okay. They pass the savings on to you at Mint Mobile. All plans come with unlimited talk and text and high speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone. Okay, you don't have to get any special phone and you can keep your contacts that way. If you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with a seven day money back guarantee. That's pretty good. That's, I mean, that's, you know, in ring times, that's the whole movie. Uh, get it ring, like phone ring and then the movie, the ring and seven, uh, seven days. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash filmhouse. That's mintmobile.com slash filmhouse. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month. Okay. I'll tell you again. It's mintmobile.com slash filmhouse. Thank you, Mint Mobile. And we're back. Okay. This is, this one is amazing. This next one that we're doing is amazing. 
and it happened random number generatingly, which is okay. my favorite thing about it. This is You've Got Mail. Mm hmm. Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan, classic. Dave Chappelle also in it. Mm -hmm. People forget. Yeah. Versus mm -hmm. Sleepless in Seattle. <laughs> Whoa. Tom easy. Hanks, Whoa. Shut it down. Really easy Ryan. For me. So, Shut you know, uh, everyone's down. saying easy. Are we saying this is all easy? Because this is yeah. interesting. This is, to me, this is like Oedipus. Because mm -hmm. in my opinion, Sleepless in Seattle is a classic. It's a classic. So, James, can mm -hmm. I can I suggest something a little bit um, unorthodox? Uh, yes, please. Could we vote and then after explain? Sure. Yeah, let's do okay. it. Okay. All right. So we're going to vote. Um, one hand for You've Got Mail, two hands for Sleepless in Seattle. You okay. guys ready? On yep. three. Question. Yes. If everybody votes against me, can I try to change your mind? <laughs> I'm scared now. I'm nervous what you guys are going to vote for. No, You Lindsay. all know what I'm voting it's gonna for. Be locked, it's going to be locked in, <laughs> Don't vote unfortunately. Okay. 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 <laughs> Come on. All right. I'm ready. All right. So one for You've Got Mail, two for Sleepless in Seattle. Okay. On three. One, two, three. Huge. That's right. Huge. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Lindsay, what were you even thinking? God, yeah, I didn't know you, like, you were monster? trying to be like a temptress or something. I don't know. <laughs> no, I've I've seen that movie a billion times. I owned it on VHS. All right. So a unanimous win for You've Got Mail. I think that's mm -hmm. our first unanimous win here, which is huge, mm -hmm. especially when you consider that it was a follow up to Sleepless in Seattle. Basically, someone said, how can we make this movie again? And you know what they did? They did it better. And they did it in they a timeless way better. using AOL. <laughs> I, <laughs> love that, I love that that movie is a time capsule. Yes. It's yes. great. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, they're talking about Starbucks and... And Big box AOL stores. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the Barnes and Noble. Like the Barnes and Noble is the bad guy. Yeah. And yeah. like, oh, that's so terrible. Yeah, it's great. I've talked a lot about this movie in other podcasts and other funhouse videos, so I won't go into the plot so much, but I will divulge a new piece of information that I don't think I've talked about. But this movie, You've Got Mail, probably is um what gave me sort of like a complex of like um, I suddenly was really bent on trying to find love online for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. So I had many online, you know, trysts, trysts. suitors mm -hmm. where I was like, hey, let's get to know mm -hmm. each other anonymously and then mm -hmm. see how it works out. Let's yeah. talk about so fresh, pen fresh yeah. pencils in the New that, York like, fall. I had that like dream and that was like my dream love because it worked for, you know, Shop Girl and NY152. That, you know, so yeah. that's that's a movie and it'll never happen in real life. It's not possible. And one and why one five two the number time, okay. of moles he's had removed. Yes. Yes. The uh, <laughs> I just I just think that this movie pops more. I think Sleepless in Seattle is is it, it also makes sense in the time period where romantic comedy wasn't like a a genre of a genre. It was like, mm -hmm. sometimes you make a romance movie and you have a couple laughs in it. That's what yeah, Sleepless yeah, yeah. in Seattle is. For the most part, it's pretty depressing because mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's like almost in some ways trying to make a, a romance that has ups and downs with some levity just so that way you don't completely get in the basement. Whereas you've got mail happened in the, the refined nineties period where, where people were, it was like when Mark McGuire was just, doping up on steroids, hitting home runs. They, the same thing happened in the romantic com comedy genre where it was everything was how can we knock it in? We had talked before this started about One Fine Day, like these movies that didn't necessarily even make this list, but everyone was just, they had the formula and they were trying to hit homers. And I think You've, You've Got Mail is definitely the version. They took something that they knew already worked. They already knew Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan had this charisma and they were like, all right, let's, take that concept and let's inject it with 
Mark McGuire level steroids and then see if we can make it romantic. Well, th- this comedy. movie moves. It has a lot to it. It has so much texture to it. Just the fact that like she's a bookstore owner. She's got her crew in the store. He's a he's a millionaire. He's at one point he moves into his yacht, which is next to his father's yacht, which is next to his grandfather's yacht. Yeah. The the introduction of the you know, he's got these these half siblings that are 30 years younger. He's got than a half just, sibling who's like an 11 year old his, and a, his and aunt a, and his aunt you know, who's like an 11 year old. Yeah. Whatever. And it's just it has so much weird texture to it. Mm-hmm. And the yeah. fact that, you know, Meg, the way Meg Ryan's story gets wrapped up with not just her finding love, but being elevated as an author. Like there's the sweet and and the the bittersweet to it. It mm-hmm. it uh, th- that he's that there's that turn in it where he's now he's got to win her back. The heartbreaking letter she sends when her store is closing, you know, twirling with her mother in the store, the implication that Twirl. shop around the corner was her mother's store. Like there's just so much to it. And I, love I also it. attribute a lot of that to um, like Nora Ephron is one of my favorite writers. I love Nora Ephron, mm-hmm. all her, her books. Mm-hmm. Um, she just had such a unique voice for writing and she wrote and directed this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, uh, I, I love this movie with, so much. Zach hates sister, it. With her sister, Delia Ephron, Delia. who does not get enough credit. Yes. A lot of the those little comedy moments are from her, and I think we we should celebrate her as well. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, perfect film. Love that film. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. Well, perfect it, film. It dominated. So we'll keeping everyone should be keeping an eye out. I don't know if I'm you want to call my your bookie. Egg harvested. Call your bookie, <laughs> but uh, we do have a major contender there, and you've got mail. That. All right, we we have only a little bit of time, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to get through. This next, try and get through half of this next bracket, and then from there we'll have to pick it up and then wrap things okay. up. So okay. we're moving on to our second bracket. Okay. Uh, I don't know enough about sports to know what to call this, so we'll call it bracket two. Um, Got it. And so we have, are going to the West Coast, Groundhog Day versus okay. four weddings and a funeral. <sighs> Ooh, both uh, Andy McDowell vehicles. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Oh, mm-hmm. Zach, um, you had some thoughts. I haven't actually ever seen four weddings okay. and a funeral, but again, I don't really feel like Groundhog Day is a pure romantic comedy. Uh, so I'm gonna, I probably vote against it. Wow, I see okay. what you're saying. Yeah, I see what, I you're, see saying. what you're saying. It, it definitely feels like yeah, like Four Weddings and Funeral is a pure romantic comedy. I saw it a long time ago, but I'll always it's stay with the fact time. that my my mom went and saw it in theaters and then came back and gave it a pretty scathing review um, <laughs> to me as a <laughs> child. So um, so I will that has always hung over me as I've seen this seen this movie, and then. Uh, and I always confuse it with death at a funeral, which is also really funny. I see what you're I, saying, Zach, about... Oh, go ahead, sorry. Go ahead, Lindsay. Oh, no. I was also just going to agree with you. And I feel like Groundhog's Day is more of a holiday film. So I'm going to go with the four weddings and a funeral for this one because it is that true rom-com. And that's it, what this bracket's all about, right? And that's what this holiday's all about. Laughing it, and love. Live, laugh, love. Yeah. Groundhog Day, in my opinion, is a much better film. I'm kind of wondering oh, yeah. about like because like he does they do establish that there's like something that these two are can't possibly end up together within the first five minutes of that movie like they they just immediately throw it down, water and oil which is which is a pretty in my opinion a stronger setup than some of the other movies we've mentioned not getting on the list where it's just someone just shows up along their journey that they end up with at the end for the sake of it being a movie so I don't know, but yeah, it is more about his journey, but his journey does involve love in a lot of ways. Ooh, this is tough. Elise, thoughts? Because, yeah, I think that his his journey with himself enables him to become someone who can love mm-hmm. and love in the way that he does. Mm-hmm. And that's a big part of it. I will say that these are movies that that explore the or they have a do two different passages of time that work in interesting ways in telling the plot. Groundhog Day, of course, because his day is repeating for eight years or whatever. And four weddings and a funeral because it's told through this passage of time where, you know, it's not like it's Mm -hmm. back to back to back. It's the, you know, the year Mm -hmm. progresses as these big events happen and we're, we're focusing in. I didn't even know that. 
I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, and that's something else. I, I should have said it. I love that about You've Got Mail, too, which is the fact that it takes you through, you know, the course of this year or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Nine starts starts also. in starts in fall and then kind of ends in summer. Yeah. Um, Night, yeah. So, uh, yeah, if we're doing Sunday Funeral is more of a classic romantic comedy because really the love is the focus of it. Um, it's got some memorable side characters in it as well. Mm-hmm. <sighs> it's tough. Stop all the clocks is a memorable. Think, well, unfortunately, as tough as it is, we got to vote. Yeah. So I'm so, ready to um, vote. Grand, Groundhog Day is a perfect film. Well, it wasn't on the perfect film list, unfortunately, so legally we can't call it that. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. We're going to have to vote. So we're going to do one hand for Groundhog Day, two hands for four weddings and a funeral. Are you okay. guys ready okay. on three? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One, two, three. Okay. All right. Well, that's the way it goes. Four weddings and a funeral takes Groundhog Day. Pretty, pretty big there. At least I feel like before we were starting, you were saying you could see Groundhog Day going all the way. But I guess sometimes when it's matched up. Such a good movie. It's just a different thing altogether. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It it pretty much uh, ruined the relationship between Bill Murray and uh, what's his face? Hill Ramis. And for that, I'll never forgive it. Yeah. (laughs) Until the very end. Um, Okay. Let us move on to this is going to be an interesting one. I don't know that it'd be difficult, but uh, the Philadelphia story versus crazy, stupid love. (laughs) So one of the classic highest regarded Mm -hmm. romances of all time versus the Philadelphia story. I'm just kidding. Uh, That was that was a a bait and (laughs) switch. I was, of course, referring to Philadelphia story. Mm -hmm. Um. Hmm. I mean, uh, I mean, you've got fucking Cary Grant, Catherine Hepburn, and Jamie and Jimmy Stewart in mm-hmm. this movie. Yeah, it's a classic. It's yeah. time tested. It's a classic. Crazy Stupid Love. I know came out and people liked it. I saw it and I was like, yeah, it's nice. It's got it's got uh, Ryan Gosling's abs in it you know like it's funny but again i've also i've also said before i don't think that his abs were as tight as say a ryan reynolds abs like just you know in terms of comparison of physiques there so i have kind of staked my claim on that um so um i've, I mean, just, I've never seen a Phil- the philadelphia story so I've never it's seen it, i mean so I it's one of those classic movies where the dialogue is just so sharp and witty and just the back and forths are electric you know it's a it's a kind of a love quadrangle if you will zach mm-hmm. you you know it I, you must have seen it and you know in a I, lonely I mean, nugget I, session I, you know i haven't uh, seen it but oh, oh okay i i if it's anything like philadelphia i think it's you know <laughs> mm-hmm. maybe, it's pretty similar yeah, you know then <laughs> i gotta go with it i think okay mm-hmm. this the, you know we try and be as informed as we can on this panel but sometimes we're forced to make decisions yeah that we you know it's just, aren't into, there there are character archetypes oh, and things I, that appear from in the lo- poster look at this Shut, this is gorgeous Sorry, there, oh, that's okay. I was just gonna say there there are character <laughs> archetypes and elements of future romantic comedies that this movie set the mm-hmm. the basis for. Yeah. All right. All right well, well, you let's, have my vote. Let's, let's, yeah, I'm ready. Let's let's vote. Uh, one hand for Philadelphia Story. Two hands for Crazy Stupid Love. On three. One, two, three. Wow. Ooh, okay. Our for second sure. unanimous. Voted for the movie unanimous. I've never seen, but I believe you. Just the, the indignity of, of losing to a movie that people haven't even seen. <laughs> or Crazy Stupid Love. I don't think anyone from uh, from Crazy Stupid Love cares. I mean, <laughs> Steve Carell is going to come after us, guys. The thing is, there's a whole world of classic before the genre was refined romantic comedies like yeah. some like it hot and like stuff like that didn't even make this list just because we maybe didn't think of them but there's just also so much new iconic stuff that i am glad that something philadelphia story can come in and stomp out something like crazy stupid love it's an 80 okay, year old movie let's move on we're gonna get it kind of get a similar showdown here i know zach is gonna have some strong words 
Overboard versus The Apartment. <laughs> oh, Zach, you can talk closely to The Apartment, but I'll just say Overboard is a story of Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. She is a mean, rich woman, and he is f- fixing her boat, I think. And she falls. She, oh, he's like installing closets in her yacht. And she falls off, gets amnesia, and then Kurt Russell hatches the completely appropriate plan to convince her that she was his wife so that way she'll raise his children because she was mean to him on a boat. Then they fall in love, pretty much. So... Um, Is this where they uh, where they started their own uh, relationship? Is this the catalyst for it, or was this yeah. after they... Was, it, the, the, was the real love discovered on the set of this movie? Would that add to the value of this film for you? <laughs> no, and really, it's not a point that I should even bring up since we want to get this done fast. But it's, <laughs> something, it's just something that I'm wondering. Gotcha. Okay. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I wasn't there when the when things clicked for the two of them, but I can only imagine that seeing Goldie Hawn on that boat and Kurt Russell in that tank top could have... Uh, I don't know something. how they yeah. could have resisted. It seems like the Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Um, and they're, except they're still together. So, um, any other thoughts? Do we have any? I know, but Zach, you're a big I fan mean, of The Apartment, the, the right? Apartment this was your is, suggestion. The Apartment is uh, one of those classic films. You know how sometimes old comedies aren't funny at all? Mm-hmm. This one is still very, very funny and also really dark as well. Um and that's Jack Lemon is and Shirley MacLaine is so adorable in this movie. She's so <laughs> cute in this movie before, like she started believing in aliens and stuff, <laughs> I think, or mm-hmm. it's a, or believing she was in, reincarnated from an alien. I think that uh, it was a just wonderful chemistry, very simple, uh, you know, a lot of it just takes place in the, <laughs> in the apartment. Right. Mm-hmm. So, like, I think I would, uh, you got to go with the apartment. Okay. And I, as you could probably tell from me spouting this bullshit, I haven't seen it for like 10 years. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but uh, Overboard, fine. But it's one of those movies that like you go over to your dad's house on Sunday because that's the yeah. day he has you. And then it's on ABC uh, the Sunday night movie and then it's edited and you watch it and uh, there's no swears. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's it, everyone's <laughs> universal experience. It's like, okay. it's like, uh, a Porky's adjacent, like yeah. kind of like, like they're like, if we make a movie and it's, it's got, we put a little bit more into it than Porky's, we should be fine. Um, and all the thoughts? best romance arises from a woman being tricked. That's true. I've never seen either, but Zach has me wanting to watch The Apartment later. So oh, it, it's a good one. It might be my vote. That's all you need. Okay. All right. Well, let's vote. Easy. Um, one hand for Overboard uh, and two. One hand for Overboard, a movie where a man tricks an amnesic woman into thinking that she should run his household and I think have sex with him. Or two, uh, The Apartment where... One guy lets two people bang in his place, <laughs> have have affairs in his place, right? Isn't that what that's about? Okay. Uh, so one for Overboard, two for the apartment on three. One, two, three. Okay. All right. Know. We're getting into it now. All right. We're getting into it now. Um, and we're going to do this. So we're going to we have time for one more uh in this uh in this bracket and then we'll have to finish it next time so the apartment wins that this last round is going to be very interesting one okay clueless clueless alicia silverstone classic just a classic uh versus how to lose a guy in 10 days now you know matthew mcconaughey and uh kate hudson's daughter um fulfilling the shoes that Kurt Russell and Goldie had left before they took, they were really pushed as this new romantic comedy couple and did several films together. Um, and so just, you know, carry the weight of that because I think how to lose a guy in 10 days was the, was the kickoff to their, to their reign. Um, but clueless in so, my opinion is just one of the best films I've ever made. 
So, yeah, I have a couple things to say. First of all, why are they different fonts on the bracket? bracket? That was bothering me. Okay. <laughs> um, second of all, I love Clueless. It is, like, yes, a really amazing film. It mm -hmm. There is a love story in it, like one kind of love story, but it's not really, a, like, super apparent until, like, whatever, like midway through maybe. And even in the end, you're like, wait, does that make sense? Yeah, okay. But then is it, does it? It's weird. Um, I love it. I love that movie. But it's not a rom-com. It's like, it's comedy. It's like super. Okay. It's coming of age. Yeah, comedy. And I, so with that said, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, like that is like classic rom-com. There's a couple. Will they, won't they? Romantic scheme. In the end, they get together. Will they, won't they? Like I already said. The uncle it, that farts. How to lose a guy in ten days. I I hear I hear you. I will also add. I think Amy Heckerling is a completely underrated uh, comedic director. She's a master, and I think Clueless is a masterpiece, in my opinion. It is I, not to con not to convince you otherwise, but I will say that for me, the whole thrust of the film is romance, and while the plot may not be entirely from beginning to end driven around the romance between just the main character and the main character's love interest. I do. I, I am okay with this because it is romance is the theme. Love is the theme of this film. Um, and unlike something like groundhog day where love springs forth from a different kind of adventure, I I feel comfortable, more comfortable with this one being in the romantic comedy category. James, I uh, hear in you. My opinion. Yeah. I hear you. I think I agree with the statement on Amy Hagerling. She, you know, mm -hmm. churned mm -hmm. out some mm -hmm. classic movies and got a lot of guff and deserves to be recognized. Uh, though I have to wonder if the relationship between this young teenager and her stepbrother was, mm -hmm. you know, is going to last or we should we be skeptical of that relationship whereas these yes. two you know ad executives <laughs> Kay hudson and matthew mcconaughey that's that seems like a relationship that's gonna fall, last beyond the film mm -hmm. <laughs> okay all right zach do you hear me yeah i hear you i think you're making no sense <laughs> I don't know that we should be judging films based on what happens after the film to the fictional characters in the film. Zach, I hear you. I hear you. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know what I'm going to vote for. What are you voting for? Uh, I, 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 I honestly feel like um, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days sort of represents a decline in romantic comedy films Ooh, um, okay. from like the Nora Ephron era. So oh, yeah. I, I will be voting for Clueless uh, and going against my earlier thesis of it doesn't fit the genre just because I like Clueless a lot more than How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. Bold. So Bold. I, I mean, have I agree. no yeah. moral background. Like, yeah. You know what, Zach? You can't lose something you never had. We, Can I that's, ask? that's something that Kate Hudson says in that movie. Well, okay, I wouldn't great. know. I, it's not memorable to me. <laughs> Can I also say that she had Cher, a yellow dress? Cher Horowitz and her f group of friends, they would a hundred percent. Speaking of what happens after the movie, they are you know they're all TikTok moms, right? Like they're moms of the TikTok girls. Like that's mm -hmm. you see the, the wealthy girls on TikTok. They're TikTok moms. So I just want to put that out there too. Love okay. Clueless. Good noted. Love Cher. But she okay. was never going to change. All right. Um, Let's vote. Okay, fair enough. Let's vote. <laughs> so it's going to be one hand for Clueless, two for How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. On three. One, two, three. Oh, there it is. Wow. Clueless. It's a tough one. I see exactly what you're saying. I understand what you're saying, Lindsay. I think... I just think that on a personal note for me, I, I was okay with Clueless um, coming in strong here. I mean, and, I love uh, Clueless. Yeah. I love that movie, but mm -hmm. it's yeah, just... I get what you're saying. And I also, but I also kind of agree with Zach that I think that How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days is like on the borderline of 
when uh what's her face it was like 27 dresses and like oh Kath- hot uh, Catherine and cold Heigl. or what Catherine Heigl kind of like did her run of romantic comedies and I don't think any of them are memorable they all like blended together and no, used the same like, Katy yeah, Perry song yeah there's a song. whole drama about that because she left Grey's Anatomy to become a movie mm-hmm. star and then she got like mm-hmm. you know shafted well we may be digging into that more next time this is as far as we've got in one hour so we will be returning next week to finish this bracket. That's a promise. We will not be doing three episodes of this. We were going to be, we were going to continue up the pace. We still have to get through the East Coast side of our other bracket, and then we're going to revisit the films that have already won. Boom, boom, boom. We're going to settle next time on hey. one best romantic comedy. Before next time, guys, can yep. we change the the background of the the uh, orange and red? Do not go together visually for the color scheme. Okay. It, it, it clashes very much. And since we have a week, mm-hmm. why don't we just change it? Yes, we can change it, Zach. I will make a note of that right now okay. and it will change it in a week. I'll see you in seven days, Zach. <laughs> see you in seven days. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. <laughs>